When you look at these totem poles, Chilkat blankets, and carved wooden hats, do you wonder? Who made these? What are they used for? What do they mean to the people who made them? To my people, the Tlingit natives of Alaska, they record the history of our families and tribes. They document our relationship with the land, with the fish, with the game that has sustained us throughout the ages. When we wear them and put them in our houses, they tell people who we are. What is our lineage? They give us self-respect. They are more like the coats of arms of the noble families of Britain than the sculptures of Picasso or Michelangelo. Take this raven hat that one of our great chiefs would wear at special ceremonies and dances. It tells a story of how Raven brought light into the world for the first time. This is a story my mother and grandmother have told me many times. Like the book of Genesis in the Bible, this hat records an important part of our history. Raven looked around and it was dark. There was no sun. No moon, no stars. That was the way it was back in those ancient days, when it was dark as the inside of the earth, dark as the wing of Raven himself. He had to grope his way along the beach until he came to the Nass River. He had learned from the fishermen of the night about an old man and about the bright treasures he kept in his house. So Raven groped his way up the banks of the river. He flew up the banks of the river. He ran and he danced all the way to the headwaters and the house of Nashak Ankau. He was wealthy, that old nobleman. He had many treasures, but the greatest ones he kept in boxes there in his house. The sun, the moon, and the stars. He had another treasure, too, a beautiful daughter, one he loved very much. Raven learned all that from the fisherman of the night. He turned himself into a spruce needle. He floated down the river into a pool, floated there, and waited. The servants didn't notice him when they brought water into the house, and the daughter didn't notice him either when she dipped her ladle into that water and held it to her lips and drank didn't even notice Raven as she swallowed him down, and now he was inside her, and she became pregnant. Nine months later, she gave birth to Raven in the form of a human child. That nobleman of the headwaters of the Nas, Nashak Ankau, he loved his little grandson, didn't care where he came from, didn't know who he was, just thought he was his grandson. He wouldn't deny him anything. And Raven, as that little boy, he looked around the house and he had figured out where the treasures were hidden. And so, when he was old enough, he asked to play with one of the boxes that was next to the house screen. His mother said no. But Raven cried and carried on so much that the old man gave in to him. When no one was looking, Raven went to the box and opened it up. Out flew the stars, all the stars of the nighttime sky. Out they all flew, up out of the box, up through the smoke hole, up into the black sky, where they scattered and glimmered and have remained to this day. Nashak Ankau could hardly believe it, but the star's box was empty. The little boy pretended to be very sorry about what he'd done. He cried and he cried and wouldn't be comforted. Finally, to stop his crying, Nashak Ankau gave him the second box to play with, even though the boy's mother didn't think he should have it. Maybe she was thinking her old father spoiled her son too much, but he was trying to explain to her that he was a good boy, didn't mean to lose the stars, and Raven just crept up behind them when they were arguing like that. Softly and silently, like a feather rising on the wind, 
the moon rose out, up through the smoke hole. The old man tried to catch it, but he couldn't. Nobody could. It didn't belong to anybody anymore. Now there was a moon in the nighttime sky, and people began to see what the world they lived in was like. The old man grieved over the loss of his treasures, but still he loved his little grandson, and he forgave him. He wouldn't let him near the biggest box, though. That was his final greatest treasure, box of daylight. So Raven waited. He waited until late, late one night. He put on his wing cape, turning himself back from a human child and into a black bird again. He rose up. All the people of the Nass, all the people of the night, all the people of the world were asleep. He crept to the box. He opened it slowly. Great light shone out. It rose, and it rose, up through the smoke hole, and the stars faded before it, and the moon and daylight broke over the world. The people of the world woke up, and they marveled. They saw the first sunrise, and they saw the world they had been living in, truly saw what they had for the first time. He saw Raven, recognized him for what he was, and he knew what had happened. He grieved for the loss of his treasures. He grieved even more for the loss of his grandson. But just then, a sunbeam came through the smoke hole, and it fell upon him, warmed him, and he looked around, and he saw clearly, and he understood. <laughs> 